today we're going to go through an intro to Catalyst EX, which is the slicing software we'll use to process STL files in order to be printed on the Uprint SE+. Plus. So the first thing you'll notice when you open up Catalyst is that on the right hand side you have this dynamic help menu. Now we're going to go through each of the features, um, but there are some things we won't cover, some more advanced features, and sometimes maybe you'll just forget how to do things. So if you click and drag this window open, it is a really good help menu to help you remember uh, if you forget how to do something or just how to do things in general. Um, at the very top, there is a menu where you can click on specific things such as um, what would I do in the general tab. So if I click on the general tab, it'll tell me what's available here and what I can do. Or um, if I wanted to, if I was working with orientation of my part, what can I do with orientation? What are some good practices and things like that? So this is a good place to look for different things if you forget or if there's something that we didn't we don't talk about in this video that you might want to do so I'm gonna go ahead and make that window a little smaller to give us a little more room to work over here now at the top of the screen there are a total of five tabs and we kind of work through these in a linear fashion in order to process our part um, the first thing we need to do though is actually import a part now before we do that what you may notice up here is that uh, my status is disconnected so uh, when you're actually connected to the machine, this status will actually reflect what is happening with the machine at the current time. So if it's printing a part, it'll say printing. If it's sitting idle and ready for a part, it'll say idle. And then also it'll tell you how much model material and how much support material is needed. Because with the U-Print, we print two materials. Model is what your actual STL will be printed with. And then support is the soluble or removable support that can support overhangs and assemblies and things like that so you can actually print out working assemblies. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the file menu and open STL. And when I do that um, I'm going to open up this buckle file. When I do that um, it actually imports two different STLs but they're imported uh, they were saved as one STL so it's two different parts saved as one STL and this is just a standard clip buckle that you might find on any backpack. Um, now if I use if I click in the window left click and then I can use my scroll wheel to scroll in and out. If I click and hold the left mouse button I can rotate my part around and get a little better view of that part. If I click and hold the scroll wheel as well, I can uh, rotate around and get a better view of my part as well. On the right hand side, um, the first option is layer resolution. We're always going to leave that at 0 .01. We're never going to change that. Um, the second is model interior. So this is, if you've used the MakerBot before, this is very similar to infill. But instead of having a percentage, we have three options. We can print the empire, entire part solid. We can print it with a sparse high density or a sparse low density, which is basically honeycombing the inside of the part. So if you need something as strong as it can possibly be, we're definitely going to pick solid. If it's more of a prototype that you just want to test for fit and it's not going to have a lot of stress put on it, then we can go to a sparse low density. If it's somewhere in between, we can use sparse high density. Um, generally, we want to avoid solid unless we really need it because it does waste a lot of or it doesn't waste a lot of material, but it uses a lot of unnecessary material if you don't need it to be solid. Um, but as a general rule, solid is going to basically use be 100% solid. High density is going to use about 80% of that material for the same part. And sparse low density is going to use about 60% of that material for the same part in general. So for this one, just for the demo, I'm going to go ahead and select solid. Now we also have some options for support fill. Um, Generally, we're going to, I would say 99% of the time, we're going to leave this on smart because it's going to analyze the model and then decide what the best support materials are needed for this part, part to print well. Um, we can also do or use basic or surround. Um, and surround may be useful sometimes if you have a lot of uh, hanging features or parts that you're worried about um, uh, sagging or maybe making the part fall over while it's printing or things like that where it's unbalanced we might need to use a surround um, but once again that uses a lot of support material in a lot of cases we don't really need it so um, use smart supports if you think there's an instance where you might need surround or basic um, check with your instructor first so go ahead and select smart 
Um, we can copy this file uh, multiple, so it prints multiple times. Um, I don't generally use that here. There's a better place that I'll show you how to do later. So generally leave this number of copies at one. The STL units, you have two options. So when you export your STL, you need to either export it in inches or export it in millimeters. Those are your only two options. So if you export it in centimeters, you're going to run into some scaling problems. So um, if I exported this particular file in inches, if I had select, exported it in millimeters, I'd just select millimeters. But I'm going to stay in inches for now. And then here is where I can do a scale. So if I need to scale this thing up or down, let's say I made it one size and I need to scale it down to 70%. So I can go 0.7 and hit tab, click on the screen, and, and that part has been scaled down. You can kind of see the grid lines on the screen to kind of give you an indication of what size it is. Also down here in the bottom left-hand corner, um, it tells you what the current size in the X, Y, and Z axes that your model is. So right now, you can see the X is 3.12. If I take this back up to 100% or 1, hit tab, then my X is up to 4.46 to its original size. So I'm going to leave it at 100% scale for the time being. Next thing I'm going to do is go to the next tab, which is orientation. And this is where you can mod or change the orientation of your part to kind of maximize strength or print time or things like that. In general, more height, Z height, is going to take more time to print. So the flatter you can get things, the quicker they print in general. Um, when you bring in the part, it'll bring it in the orientation that you saved it in when you exported your SDL. Um, there is this auto orient button at the top right. So if we click the auto orient button, um, it's basically going to keep the parts flat, but it'll rearrange them to minimize the amount of space used on the build platform. Um, so we can print it like this. I'm going to go ahead and undo that STL orientation and take it back to the original orientation, which is where I want it. Now, if I wanted to rotate this a specific amount, so let's say um, I have two parts together, so it's a little harder to rotate, but let's say I wanted to rotate this on this x-axis, and I want to rotate it 90 degrees. I have 90 degrees selected here. I can choose any number here, or I can type in a uh, number of degrees. So let's say I wanted to rotate this 70 degrees. I could type that in, and then choose the x-axis, and it'll rotate it about that axis, the number of degrees that you specified. And you can do that about the X, Y, or Z. I'm going to undo that because I don't want that rotation. I want it to lay flat. Um, you could also scale this here as well. So if you want to change the STL scale. Um, right now we're in an ISO view, but if you want to do a top view, you have that. Front view, right view, and then back to the ISO view. And we can zoom in and out of that. So if I want to look at that top view, I can zoom in and out of the top view. Go back to ISO view. And currently, this is oriented the way I would like it to be oriented. If you have any questions about best orientation for a specific part and you're not 100% sure, just check with your instructor and they will advise you on the best orientation for your specific part for either print speed or strength or whatever your requirements may be. Once you have your part oriented, you're going to go ahead and click you can click one of two buttons process STL or add to pack I generally select add to pack because it'll go through and process it and then go ahead and add it to our build plate automatically and kind of saves me pushing an extra button so I'll click add to pack and it's going to go through and slice that model in the Z it's going to add the supports and then slice all the supports generate all the information and uh, that you need to send over to the printer in order to print it and then it's going to send it to the pack and you'll notice that the next tab at the top of the screen is pack so when we go there, this is a representation of our build plate. So now I can click on this process file and I can drag this around anywhere on the build plate that I'd like to print it. Now if I wanted to have multiples of this part, instead of copying earlier where I showed you, this is, in my opinion, the better way or better place to copy files. So once I have it all processed and everything, I'm going to select copy. And then I can indicate the number of copies I like. So let's say I wanted three total, so I want two copies and that's going to add those and it's going to add a number to each one and that is also trackable over here on the right hand side so you know what the name of the file is for each ID number now if I go ahead and delete these so I'll click on that one and hit remove click on this one and hit remove now if I copy again one thing you'll notice 
I have to select the model first, copy. I want to make two copies. Is that the numbers do not start over again. They continue. So we, I had two and three. I deleted them. Now I have four and five. So they don't start over. So if you do delete something and then copy again, you will notice that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. And once it's on the plate here, if I need to rotate it to make it fit better, say I had six or seven of these and I wanted to make it fit as best as possible and use the least amount of material. So let me go ahead and copy one of that file. So I want to put this up in the top left corner. So I want to rotate this 90 degrees and I'm going to put that up in that corner. Let's say that I wanted to kind of nest this as best as possible with this part. I'm going to select the second part and I'm going to rotate it the opposite direction so that I can bring this in here and nest this and use as little build plate as possible. Now if you get too close where it won't print well, what you'll notice is it's going to put a grid pattern, this honeycomb pattern, through the parts that will not print properly. And then you'll need to pull that away until you get to a point where it says that those are going to print properly. If you get a bunch of parts in here and you just want to start over, there is this clear pack option at the bottom right hand corner and it will remove everything from the pack from this build plate. If you get a build plate set up and it's something that you know you're going to print at least one or two more times, an option is to come down here to save as and you can save this entire build plate as a CMB file. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click save as. I'm going to just leave it as pack underscore buckle and then I'm going to save that. Now let's say that um, you go ahead and print this and come back later and you want to print that exact same pack but you don't want to go through the whole process of slicing it and orienting it and everything again so let me go ahead and clear this I can go straight to this insert so I can go straight from general without going through processing this again I can go to pack insert CMB and you'll notice that there is this CMB file now you automatically generate one whenever you process a file so I have the individual part as a CMB that I can insert specific or directly to the pack so I'll hit open and that brings that part in I'm going to go ahead and clear that. But if I wanted to bring in multiple parts that I saved as a pack, I can also insert CMB and this pack underscore buckle and open, and it'll insert that same pack into, onto my build plate. Now what you'll notice is it saves all your parts as one file pretty much, so I can't go back and change the uh, position of these original parts. They're, they're packed as one. So if you need to do that, then you'd have to insert that original and then insert that multiple times and make copies and rearrange your pack if you wanted to do that. On the right hand side, after I, this is what I want to print, so this is ready to go. On the right hand side you'll notice that there is a model material and support material section and it's basically telling me how much model material I'm going to use and how much support material I'm going to use. So in this case I'm at 1.38 cubic inches of model, 0.98 cubic inches of support, and it's going to take about two hours and 55 minutes for this part to print. Now when you print your parts, um, you need to go through and rename your pack. So it should be, we'll just say whatever the name of the part is, and then underscore your first initial and last name, just to make sure that we know who printed each of the parts. So you need to go up there under pack and rename your pack with your first initial and last name at the end of it. Once you have everything set here, all you're going to do is click print. And that's going to send it over to the printer, and then we'll go through in another video how to start the printer, get it prepared, and get your part printing. Now, if I go to the printer status tab, anything that I've sent over to print, so let's say I send this over and it starts, and I want to process another file to be ready to go whenever that other one's done. In the build queue, this is where I'm going to have all my parts that I've sent. So I can queue up as many parts as I want, and then... I can even manipulate the queue so if I the fourth part that I've processed I actually want to print next I can click on it and move it up in the queue to make it the next part to print so that's one place that you can keep track of how many parts have been sent over and then in what order they're going to print and then our printer services tab you can go through and check the printer history to see um, what parts you've printed and how much material you've used and things like that after you, but after you've sent the part over, make, once again, make sure you change the name of the pack, check the amount of material, and make sure it's within the requirements for the project. Um, you're ready to go over to the physical machine and get started with your print.